Hello, hello. Hopefully my mic works. I'm still trying to set up my office here. But let's get started. What's going on, everyone? Uh, let me figure out where my window is here. Okay, I'm doing this right. I'm doing this right. Sorry. Uh, I was going to do, you know, one of my old style videos where I would just um, kind of like write it out shoot it then edit it splice in some video clips some examples and stuff like that but i was a little bit lazy this week and i apologize but i have another video that i will be doing like that let me just show this on facebook real quick okay whoops Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, those of you who tuned in, I was on 210 yesterday, and I kind of spoke about this idea, like, off-camera, and Cecilia thought it was an awesome idea. I was like, you know what? I, I need, like, that. I need, like, a little bit of support sometimes with my crazy ideas. Hello, Color Me Red from Colorado. Okay, so everyone, ev everyone within this community, and even if you're not in this community, I'm sure you're aware that, you know, bullies exist it sucks it's a part of life uh I've, I, I've i've been on that you know on that side and i'm on that side now with cyber bullies within the community and a lot of people wonder like why do we have it Ooh, that was a little preview of what we're going on so i'm not an expert i'm just a guy with a platform and opinions here but I don't like talking out of my ass like some other people do. I like actually researching, finding facts, finding, you know, studies, using those studies just because I don't have a degree in um, social psychology, which is what I've been reading on for like the past couple of weeks. Doesn't mean I can't talk about it. You, just like you might not be a professional chef, but you know how to cook an egg, that kind of thing right here. Uh, you not, might not be a real influencer, have any idea what you're doing, but yet you have a platform. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about right here. So I wanted to talk a little bit about social psychology and why people cyber bully. So I been, been, I've been digging into this for like a long time, and this is going to go hand in hand with part two of this episode. Part two is going to be, I, I want to name it something fun, something like um, people who hide their hate or people who try and hide hate behind the First Amendment because freedom of speech doesn't give you the permission to say whatever the hell you want and some people are pretty idiotic and think that oh well it's the first amendment i could say this no that's why people get sued that's why people lose cases because they're not as smart as they think they are but thank you everyone here who's in the chat so far let's get started people okay so the, the funny thing that people need to understand about this is when it comes to cyberbullying, this isn't an issue amongst adults. I don't know what my dogs are barking. This isn't an issue amongst adults. Cyberbullying, if you look for any um, examples, if you look for any studies done, if you look for any papers that are written on this, any self-help with cyberbullying, it all revolves around middle school, high school, and college. So we're basically talking about child issues, issues dealing with kids, but it's, you know, 50 60 70 80 year olds that are doing this and that's pretty stupid out of all the people that involved that are involved with this social media thing this little community that we have even though we're not all on the same page and we're all against each other i think i'm you know not to brag i think i'm the youngest one but i think i have a better grip than mostly everyone else when it comes to cyberbullying it's stupid it's the way you get yourself in trouble but a lot of people need a fight for those you know one dollar two dollar three dollars per video and i get it y'all you know you have no other way to bring income in uh is well correct there's a lot of things there but i'm gonna i'm gonna save that for like a little bit later on but here so it was really hard to try and translate this information to the adult you know situations that we got going isabel you probably know exactly what like who i'm talking about and it's just like that a lot of people watching probably have an idea and when looking at cyberbullying social psychologists came up with four reasons why someone might cyberbully because i was curious i'm like what causes someone to be so full of hate what causes someone to go after people for no reason and there's four examples
Okay. The first one, which is pretty much the easiest one here to talk about, is self-esteem. I thought I had my little window here. Let's change it up since we're going to be talking a little bit different. Okay, self-esteem. This is one of the reasons why someone might become a cyber bully, why, why someone might go after someone. Me? Um, people might say I'm a little bit cocky, but I have a good level of self-esteem. I have, I believe in myself. I don't have to worry about competing with anyone else. I'm comfortable in where I am. There's some who don't like this, who have very low self-esteem, and that's mainly because of negative feedback. People with low self-esteem might engage in cyberbullying as a way to just make themselves feel better about themselves. Hey, Kim. There's uh, there's anonymous sites like Reddit, 4chan, Yik Yak that people are able to post and say things, make comments about people anonymously. And that's really just a self-esteem issue because one, you're hiding behind a fake account, which a lot of people on these platforms do, using you know nothing that can be linked back to you because you don't want people to see how hurt you are. You don't want people to see how low you are. And by putting down others, even if it's anonymously, which everyone here who does bash people does it anonymously, it's just a way for them to to raise their self-esteem and maybe find happiness. Maybe by, you know, getting out of their reality. Let's see, color me red. I think cyberbullying is way different from traditional bullying. I'm 59 years old. When I was young, a bullying school local kid try and beat me up or steal your lunch money. Yes. And now with cyberbullying, people could hide behind that. Like bullies in the old days, they knew they were bullies. They weren't, you know, afraid of consequences or anything. They went out there kind of like the way old bank robbers used to do it. You know, uh, they would, you know, wear suits. They would let everyone know who the gang was. And it was kind of, you know, a way for them to put their, themselves out there. Cyber bullies now, they're keyboard warriors. They hide behind a camera. They hide behind a keyboard. They hide behind all this because they're scared because they know that, you know, someone might pop them in the face for, you know, acting the way they are, saying the things they do. And they're just lonely. If you look at the hardcore people that are in this, if you look at the people who are constantly doing this day after day, hour after hour, it is always someone that has nothing better going on. Me, I got a lot of stuff like always happening. That's why I'm not able to post a video every day like some people. That's why I'm not able to constantly engage in all these things to where I leave messages on red for days because I got stuff to do. I'm not sitting around waiting for the next fight to come along. Isabel, you're gonna get somebody mad, Isabel. Okay, now let's look at this one. This one's one of my favorite ones on the second reason on why people might cyberbully. And it's the downward social comparison. And this is something that's super obvious that's been mentioned by everyone else, but maybe not mentioned in an intelligent way. Maybe just people finding different examples, but not knowing what to call it. And the downward social comparison is when people compare themselves to individuals who are doing worse than us. I'm going to use Vanessa as an example. Me? I know there's people that I talk to that, you know, support Vanessa, want Vanessa out of here. Not not out of here, but like want her like out of the drama, want her to move on and stuff like that. I, I, I'm I different than that. People who are friends could have different opinions. Yes, people need to lay off Vanessa because it's them just using this downward social comparison you know trying to kick someone while they're down so they make themselves look better uh i do think vanessa needs to answer for her crimes i do think vanessa um you know does need to have her day in court and you know whatever the judge or i think she wants a jury to go whatever they decide boom that has to be done so yes i don't think she should just disappear and you know not have to answer for any of this because a lot of people want her to answer for her crimes i'm one of them but i'm also on the side where someone doesn't need to make their entire like life about them someone doesn't need to make a video every single day about this person because what that what they're doing what they don't realize they're doing is they're giving they're 
finding a way for people to sympathize with him. They're seeing that like, oh my gosh, there's all these people going after Vanessa. Poor Vanessa. Without getting the full, the full story. So what I've seen is there's been a huge uptick of people covering Vanessa, trying to bash on her, trying to go after her. Uh, we know the James Brooks video. We know Ophelia and the Peacocks. Uh, Manny, he's not doing it anymore, so I'm not including him on this. But lately, it's been amped up a lot more. And what's all that doing? All that's gaining her numbers and sympathy and supporters. If they really want Vanessa to go down, they'll just let her think on the sinking ship instead of throwing all these uh, life preservers at her. My opinion, that's the way I see it. I don't know what you all think, but I do think that she does she does need to, you know, serve her time if that's what they give her. But with this downward social comparison, it's just people bringing each other down. Yes, there's people higher than me. There's people lower than me. The people higher than me aren't bashing me. It's the people lower than me that are usually bashing at me. But me being above some other people, I'm not, I'm not, you know, stomping them in the ground like even deeper. They want to remain low. Boom. It's the ones who are low that are always trying to bring down the ones on top also. So that's what really sucks because why are you bashing someone who's doing better than you trying to you know lift yourself up ride their coattails trying to you know be on their level when by the way you're acting that's showing that you're not yeah uh they're basically giving her more power the more they talk about her uh but they don't realize that because people are just chasing the attention right now okay Reason number three why people cyberbully here is conformity. Uh, this is the main key in cyberbullying. It's basically, uh, you know, the term uh, FOMO, fear of missing out. It's just wanting to be included, wanting to be part of a group because they can't find anyone else or they might not have any other friends. So it's kind of like a bandwagon approach like, oh, well, everyone's bashing on this one person. Everyone's attacking this one person. Uh, let me bash on this person too so they could think I'm with them and I could have a friend. I could have a circle of friends because we're all doing this together. Uh, you know, uh, like it says here, people who might not be willing to actually bully others in real life feel comfortable doing it amongst this group. It's the conformity. They don't understand why they might be bashing the, this people. They don't. They might not understand why everyone's going after this one person but if they see okay we have a giant chunk of people here going after this one person this one person really doesn't have a huge circle so i want to be a part of the majority i don't want to be a part of the minority without even knowing what what's going on um for example when you see people bullying people online all you really have to do is just go to youtube comments and you could see you know what side the the audience is leaning towards so it makes it real easy for you just to jump in and then immediately be accepted by that group and that's that's another psychology term to it's called in group and out group bias in group you're more likely to help people who are in your group example an example i gave because i um i, I ran this whole like list and everything through my wife and the example i gave her is like look if I see two people who both need the, the same amount of help, they're both in the same situation, and one's wearing a Superman shirt, one's wearing a Batman shirt, I'm more than likely to go to the person with the Batman shirt because I see that person as in my group as Batman fans. I hate Superman. I hate everything dealing with Superman. Ah, Facebook jail sucks. Hopefully you get your Facebook parole. And that's how this conformity works. They see someone in their group, so they're going to latch on and they're going to believe and go along with everything within that group because they don't want to be part of the out group. They don't want to be uh, cast out. They don't want to be, you know, rejected. So they're going to just continue going along with it. So this person could join in on bullying because they think it's the norm for the situation of the whole platform and the whole channel is constantly doing this one thing okay that's the norm that's here i'm not going to watch any other platforms i'm not going to listen to anybody else because i like this by only seeing one side of it you're going to be completely biased and you won't be able to say like oh well i don't agree with you here because you're going to be scared of being picked out um so at the root of this 
conformity, it's just doing it because you want to fit in. No other reason. Uh, you could, there, there could be, and there, there are people, because I, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to mention, um, what's up? Yeah. Oh, I'll go cook right now. I'll go make chicken right now. Okay, so I bought myself some more time. Okay, we're waiting for the chicken to thaw out because I'm gonna make some uh, some grilled chicken with mix a little teriyaki sauce, and then I've been making some um, like some Asian fried rice, and it's gonna be pretty good. But back to this, we all know somebody within this. Okay, you know, fuck it. I'm going to mention for the only, not the only example, but the biggest example that everyone could probably relate to is Annette. Okay, I'm not going to be bashing her. I'm using her as an example here to get my point across. In the beginning, Annette had like really good points. She was talking about the railroad industry because I think it's this Friday where Biden has to either agree to the terms or not, which will cost America $2 billion a day if we go into the railroad strike. Um, she would bring up those topics. She would bring up the political topics. She would bring up actual topics to get the mind going and stuff like that. But you would notice that every time Annette would call in, Ophelia would step away, like basically walking away and letting Annette talk. More As more time went on, Annette would stop talking about topics that actually mattered. She would stop talking about this and it would go into the bashing. That was conformity. She saw that she wasn't gaining the attention she saw that there wasn't really a lot of dialogue going on as much as there's people that would get engaged in her dialogue but not as much as the people who would engage when she was bashing me bashing Jaime bashing Vanessa that hyped her up to where she's like okay yes I might still care about these things but this group doesn't want to talk about it they want to talk about this so I'm going to conform and I'm going to stay talking about these things I still feel like if she really does work with the road industry or she's retired or her dad's in it, whatever the story is, because I lose track with all these stories. I'm sure she still cares about it, but the group she's in doesn't care about it as much as she does. So she's not going to bring it up. She's going to find a reason to stay in the group, to stay, you know, in the center of the group. It's just my opinion here. Uh, I could say the same thing about, you know, the other platforms that all have someone who will have different topics, want to talk about different things, but that's not the main point of that platform that's not the main reason that platform exists so it all just revolves like okay well we're going to continue talking about this um yeah give me one second i'm just going to finish off my drink here that's good it's pomegranate vanilla with um christmas sprinkles uh let's don't make fun of me of this one because this is a long word and I have a speech problem. For those of y'all who don't know, I took speech a lot. I went to speech therapy a lot as a kid. So I do have a little bit of speech problem and words like this trip me up. It's not because I don't know how to pronounce it. It's just that you, uh, my brain works a different way sometimes. Uh, if, Annette, if Annette said that, that's awesome. Like, you know, I do throw kudos to Annette because there were always comments thrown they weren't directed at her but just the fact that if they're talking about somebody who's you know morbidly obese and just throwing it so casually like as if it's a part of an everyday conversation who's to say that you're not going to be a target of that or it's not said behind the scenes about you or if they go after you that's what they're going to use against you that's why i that's why i don't talk about looks that's why i don't talk about like weight that's why i don't really make a huge thing about age i just use it as the example like earlier when i mentioned that there's you know elderly people older people doing this i just wanted to draw that comparison to the fact that everything that i could find about dealing with cyber bullies is like self-help and articles written on how to help kids deal with cyber bullies how to help middle schoolers and high schoolers uh but yes this last part which i'm gonna try to pronounce is de deviation which is basically when a person feels that they're not individually evaluated and therefore acts in the way 
they normally wouldn't this kind of goes a little bit with that example i used to where if they're not getting the kind of attention they want if they're not getting the kind of response that they want they're just going to go with what works then that's when they lose their identity it's when they kind of lose their identity to fit in more with the group to where the group becomes kind of a hive mind kind of just one entity the group becomes one entity and it's not a group made out of different individuals it's just a group of if you want to use the word hate if you want to use um cyber bullying if you want to use just bullying in general because some of the stuff does leak from the internet to physical we saw the arrest um, uh, we saw the arrest with Ophelia. we saw the arrest with Jaime and it kind of just leaks out Hey, uh, Color Me Red conformity can be described in several ways. Some days you're in the circle and everybody circles around you because you want the attention. Other days you're people outside of the circle. And yeah, it, it it's all just group mentality. And that's what a lot of this is. It's just a lot of like bandwagon, like, oh, I'm doing it because this person's doing it. You know, like when everyone was younger, the whole, you know, oh, if all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you do it too? That's basically conformity. That's like, are you just going to go along with your friends just because they're your friends? Or are you going to actually have a brain? Are you actually going to stand up for yourself? Are you going to find something, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a rebel against your friends, but if your friends are doing something that you deeply disagree with, are you just going to go along with it because they're your friends? Or are you going to say like, hey, this is wrong? That's what has to happen amongst these groups. Uh, yeah, it's just it's gotten way out of hand constantly. Every day it gets a little bit worse. And I really don't see it getting any better. People just don't want to change. And I know I had posted in my Facebook page like, Oh, should I, you know, analyze this video? Should I go about this? Because the thing with me. Oh, we have someone named Merry Christmas. That's awesome. The thing with me is I don't depend on this platform for anything. I do. I do only good with this platform. Um, do I have it? Where the hell is it? I do have it. Let me see. I'm just coming to my bookshelf. Okay. I like doing good things with my platform and using it as a platform, not using it to bankroll my bills, not using it to buy me, you know, new fancy things or anything like that. One of the things that I did when, with one of the first things I did with my platform was I found this organization that deals with uh, cyberbullying. And of course it was only in high school. So what I did was I asked anyone like, do you want to, I want to put the, I'm going to put the line open in case anyone wants to call and give me their opinions on this. Like I said, I'm not an expert. I'm not, um, degreed in this. This is just independent research that I was doing that I put together for you all just to kind of inform you all. But one of the first things I did with this platform was i said let's raise money and give it to a charity i did that on live i showed the cash app i showed the donations and i even live streamed when we donated it that ended up you know they sent me this book for free i've done through it i haven't finished it i haven't gone through everything but it's on how much it could hurt somebody this kid killed himself because of cyberbullying and I got a shirt from the organization and a letter from his mom because his mom is the one who started this organization, wrote this book. Stuff like that. The the Christmas thing I'm doing right now. We raised so much money together. I want to thank you all again. I have a garage and even my room is just filled with bags from all different kinds of stores. I went, I didn't want to go, you know uh nothing against it but i didn't want to do like five low i didn't want to do dollar tree i didn't want to do like simple retail things i went to learning express i went to toy joy i did a couple of target runs but i wanted high quality stuff i wanted good stuff for these kids i didn't want them to i, I basically went and got them stuff that they probably wouldn't find as easy as you know oh a hot wheel car or something like that some things yes because there is like some things that were just necessary like a tech deck and a barbie and stuff like that yeah understandable about those 
but like the people who wanted plush and decorations for their rooms and stuff like that i went high end and i was able to do that because of you all that's what i do about this platform so i don't care about getting demonetized i don't care if uh, people report my stuff it bothers me because i put a lot of work into my stuff and like not just talking out of my ass but I, I don't care about getting copyright strikes like if i lose this if i lose this platform it's not gonna bother me so i don't mind streaming someone i don't mind using other people's videos uh, like i used to do the movie trailers all the time like show movie trailers and we all react to it have a good time i don't mind i don't care about stuff like that like if they copyright strike me, take the video down, fine. So that's why I was like, you know what? I want to analyze some videos. Like if people could restream people and talk about them, uh, let me do that. It sounds fun. Of course, it's going to piss some people off, but I'm going to have fun doing it. I sat on that for a day. I already had like a whole line of jokes, a whole line of things. And then I thought like, okay, that's me giving into them. That's me cyberbullying. That's me taking myself down and wrapping myself in a trash bag like everyone else i decided not to do it a lot of people agreed a lot of people said let you know the low of the lows deal with the low of the lows and you stay where you're at you're doing good you're doing good with the santa stuff you're doing good with the things you talk about and you're right so that's why i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lower my standards i'm gonna continue focusing on what's important which is helping other people uh, six kids from around the country are going to get awesome Christmas gifts. Broadcasting the disclaimer helps streaming the content. Actually, it really does nothing. It just acknowledges that you're aware what you might be doing is illegal and you're putting it kind of as a safety thing. Kind of like people who say like, oh, I don't own the music in here. That's not going to stop someone from suing you for using, you know, uh, blink 182 or my chemical romance music in your video just because you say like oh i don't own it they can still come after you if you're profiting off of it uh, but you know people just like to report videos and stuff like that so it doesn't bother me uh if it gets to the point where i have to do that okay i'll uh step down and stoop to some levels but there's really not any need to it and then people like using like oh well my numbers are higher my numbers are here and I was like, yeah, because you live on the internet. Me, y'all see me only like once a week. Like, of course, your number is going to be higher than mine. The difference is, the one thing is, no, I'm not going to get into it. That's too much of a low blow. That's too much. Um, that's too much for you all. Uh, commentary in between helps too. Yes, as long as less than 5% is just someone else's content, you could use someone else's content, add a commentary. Uh, change a little bit of the things there there's ways around it okay when you when you have family like multiple family members that work within the law if you've also worked with the police department and have friends that work on that side also there's ways around it i know ways around it i just want to stoop to that it's not about chasing followers it's not about gaining subscribers it's not about finding new people to you know fill your cash app it's about just kicking back, having a conversation, having a good time, and then I can just go and live my life afterwards. That's what it's about for me. Oh man, it tastes good. Um, let's see. Oh, we could stream Jaime. Let's see. Well, I didn't know he was live, so I'm going to go watch him. Uh, we'll see when we do a live again. Like I said, my next topic is going to be uh, when people try and use the First Amendment as protection again while they use, you know, hate. Uh, basically, you know, fighting words, words intent to hurt others. That's not protected by the First Amendment. Some people think it is just because they think um, freedom of speech covers everything. It doesn't. That's why people need to pay attention in school. That's why people actually need to finish school and put this into practice. Just my two cents. I'll see you all later. Like I said, I'm going to go watch Jaime. I got to go make some dinner. And I think I'm going to watch a Hallmark movie before the night's over. So y'all have a good 